I'm out on a service call for this heat pump not kicking on. This is a thermal zone heat pump. Um, it's a old R22 unit. Um, right when I pull out the panel, I can see that this contactor right here is, is pulled in. Um, a lot of times when I see that, I instantly start thinking it's some type of a power related issue. Um, I've seen that a lot where like I have a, um, a fuse blown or a breaker tripped or something like that. Uh, especially since I'm getting my low voltage power that's sucking in this contactor is coming from that indoor unit. Um, it would have no relation if I lost power to my actual outdoor unit. So like I said, a lot of times when I see that, I just, I feel like something made the, the outdoor unit trip for power. Um, so the easiest way to check is going to my meter, putting it on volts, and I can check my incoming power first, which is, is right down here. Um, and checking that, I have 211 volts, which is good. Um, so obviously right off the get-go there, I know I have good power. Um, nothing there is tripping or causing anything um, like that to happen for this unit. Uh, it's not tripping power, or not short to ground compressor or anything like that. Um, next, I'm gonna check my power coming up on the outgoing side. I also have 211 volts. So I know I'm getting power through my contactor and now I know my power is going to my components, my compressor, condensing fan motor, all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously I have power going through, but nothing is kicking on here. Um, you can kind of see compressor down here in my condensing fan motor. Um, I have noticed that this particular capacitor is that style that has like that big drilled out hole. It's kind of like, it's hard to see it kind of right down in there. You can see a screw holding it in and it actually just has a big uh, two inch hole. They slid the capacitor in there. Um, I was trying to ex examine it to see if I could see anything was wrong with that that capacitor. And looking down, I can see the, the back end of it sticking out right down there. I think it looks like a big battery. Uh, you can see it sticking out down there. Um, the more I started to examine this, I can see that this is bulged out. So I know pretty quickly that my capacitor is failed, which is kind of one of the help starting components of my condensing fan motor and compressor. I think what's happening, because I just put my hand, when I put my hand up in this general area, I can feel the heat off of this motor and I can really feel the heat radiating up even just from that compressor. I think what's happening is the capacitor went out and now these motors have gotten so hot that they're tripped out on internal overload. Um, so I will go ahead and kill power to this unit. I'm gonna pull my wire leads off of this capacitor and I will switch my meter to capacitance and I will test basically my, uh, that dual capacitor, cause that capacitor, since I have that three prongs, it's basically starting, it's going to both my condensing fan motor and compressor. Um, so I will, Go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go kill power to this thing and then further test it and then just make sure I don't have a compressor that's short to ground or anything like that. I can ohm out my compressor, make sure everything looks good. If it is tripped on internal overload though, they can sometimes ohm out like it's a failed, um, like it's a failed compressor even though they really aren't. So sometimes you have to actually let it cool down uh, just so you can properly test the, uh, the ohms on that compressor. So I'll ohm out the compressor, check capacitance on that dual cap, and I'll also test out this condensing fan motor and see what we got going on. So you can see my unit right over there. Um, I followed out the little conduit that's up on the roof and basically all my power to all my outdoor units are coming from this breaker panel box. Um, mine's labeled 1M2 two which i see it's labeled here in this panel i'm going to turn it off and then i'll go back to the unit and check if i have power or not just to make sure i can test everything safely at this point so i have that turned off and we'll go see if that shut everything off in the unit 
So I just shot the power at the, the panel over there. Uh, I'm just gonna check to see if I have any power coming in to make sure everything was labeled correctly because majority of the time it's not. Um, so I have my power, or on the power coming in there with my leads, got zero volts. So that looks to be labeled correctly, which is nice. Um, so now I can kind of get in here and start pulling some wire wires off of this capacitor and making sure it is truly failed. So now I ended up pulling off my wires off of my capacitor here. And just a tip is always, now that we have, everyone has a phone in their pocket with a camera, I highly recommend taking a picture of your wires, just making sure when you go to put everything back together, you know exactly where it's supposed to go. But what I did is I changed my meter to capacitance and I'll basically get my leads with the wires off onto these uh, little terminals on here. And a lot of times, most of these will be like a, a five rating for the fan. And then usually like something anywhere between like 30 and 60 for a compressor. Um, unfortunately, I can't with the way this capacitor is, I can't actually see the side, but I'm kind of checking for, I'm pretty sure it's completely failed. So I'm just seeing what kind of reading I'm gonna get. Um, I've already tested this and I know I have, on each of the leads, I have zero capacitance for a fan and compressor. Just to be a little more clear on that capacitor, um, every capacitor will have it stamped on the side of what the ratings are. Uh, like I said, I can't get to this one. Another spot you can find your, your rating is on the data plate of your condensing fan motor will state what capacitor is supposed to be uh, running this motor. Uh, the compressor will state the information as well. I mean, this compressor is pretty old and pretty faded, so it might not be legible on that. But that rating I was, the, that kind of range I gave for a compressor, it will have an exact amount for whatever piece of equipment you're on. So um, that was just kind of the range that I was listing is just different different kind of sizes I typically see is somewhere in that realm. But I mean, if this one's 55 for this uh, capacitor, I mean, it has to be like, usually capacitor will also have it stamped on the side, like a range that like has to be plus or minus 10% of whatever is stated. Um, this one being zero, it's, it's a no brainer that it's toast. Um, but yeah, I just want to clarify that on the capacitor. So even though I know my dual capacitor here has failed, um, I just want to kind of go above and beyond and make sure I'm not going to write up a capacitor and come out here, throw a capacitor in, and then all of a sudden find out I have a bad condensing fan motor or compressor or something like that. So I traced out my wires to my condensing fan motor, ohmed all that out, everything looked good there. And then my compressor, this is a single phase compressor, so for that, basically you're gonna have three your common run start going into your compressor and you're gonna find those wire leads um, going to that and I personally always own it from the wires I mean I'll inspect my wire going to the compressor but I've heard of too many horror stories of people getting on a corroded lug from the compressor ohming it out and it blowing the charge or something like that um, I've had a couple co-workers have it happen to them so I just do it from the wire. It's something that I got told early on in my career and I've just kind of always done it since. Um, usually you can physically see if a wire, you know, rubbed through or is faulty or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a safety precaution that I take and that's just how I do it. Um, but you can also technically ohm it out from the compressor. Um, but yeah, so ohm it out for my wires um, with it being single phase, I should have Basically, my I should have a one higher reading and then two lower readings that will add up to whatever the higher one is. And what I mean by that is I I ohmed out uh, one leg. It was 2.2 ohms, and then I had 0.7, and then I had 2.9. So my 2.9 is my higher leg, and then if I add 2.2 to 0.7, obviously I'm getting that 2.9. So my compressor actually is ohming out correctly. So 
I feel like I've done my due diligence. My compressor seems to be homing. Condensing fan motor looks good. My next kind of bet here would be to get approval from this company that I'm doing this service call at uh, to replace this dual capacitor. And then I'll state to them, like once I have that replaced, I can further test, make sure charge and all that kind of stuff looks good. But for where I'm at right now, I'll put all these wires back on. I'll put a data tag, uh, kind of with my write up inside the unit. It's just like a little size of a post-it card or a post-it note basically. And I put it inside the unit, just the date, my name, and then kind of what I saw. I'll just put, you know, fail dual capacitor. And I will leave this off at my power source over there, that breaker basically, um, just so it doesn't do any further damage to itself uh, and actually burn out the compressor or the condensing fan motor. Um, but yeah, I feel like I kind of did my due diligence. I went through everything. Looks to be simple, pretty common failed capacitor. Um, and that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it at at this point. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.